let's talk about a movie I was not really that anticip- anticipating that much, uh, which is Chaos Walking. Lionsgate's second L on the podcast, uh, mostly just for not being very good, right? Just not a good movie? Correct. A movie that got more attention and, uh, you know, ink spilled over its production struggles and just general uh, long path to the screen, more so than anyone actually talking about watching the movie itself. You know, it's kind of like almost a legendary story at this point in the past five years of Hollywood is a very troubled production. And I had interest in it solely on that that merit, you know, kind of rubbernecking. You just can't look away. I just wanted to see exactly what it was and how bad it may be. So, yes, Chaos Walking now available on POVD after being in the theaters for about six weeks. It's it's uh, based off the sci-fi trilogy from Patrick Ness, who was also a, uh, a co-writer on this. And, um, you know, it stars Daisy Ridley, Tom Holland. So right there, you know, and then you got Doug Liman at the helm. You know, it's, it was uh, conceptualized, what, back in 2011, it was like the right. rights were bought and then it kind of went into production in 2016 famous yeah. reshoots in 2018. But because you have uh, two of the stars of, you know, huge movie franchises, uh, you had to reschedule it to like late 2019 new yeah. director. It, it's a bit of a mess. <laughs> right. And, and that's what's so funny about it too. 2008 book optioned a few years later, Daisy and, Tom were cast in 2016 and Lyman was hired as, you know, one of several directors to be attached, but he was hired then. And they went into production August, 2017. They first started shooting this movie then. But as you said, those reshoots were delayed and I didn't know this part, but Tom Holland actually missed the Avengers Endgame premiere because he was busy doing reshoots on chaos walking. And then it was supposed to come out last year in the pandemic. They just punted it. And I saw them punted all the way January 21. And I was like, ah, okay. There's the confirmation that yes, the movie is still bad. And <laughs> kind of surprisingly, they just let it come out before the movie theaters had really come back. Like, we'll get to Godzilla in a little bit. Godzilla vs. Kong, huge box office success. But Chaos Walking was ultimately just kind of sent out to die mm-hmm. and has made uh, about $20 million at the worldwide box office. <sighs> yeah. You know, it, it's interesting, right? Because... We talk, we've been talking about Tom Holland, obviously, a lot recently. We just talked about Cherry a couple weeks back. Check out that review. And I think our question is, like, can he do anything outside of Spider-Man that is, is good? <laughs> like, and it's it's kind of feeling the same for Daisy Ridley a little bit here. Like, uh, what's been the best thing she's done outside of Star Wars? Yeah, I, I think I was had these thoughts as well. And I have to imagine that both da- Daisy is not going to do um stranded space girl and tom's not going to do young man <laughs> i i don't think they, they have either of them has any interest in these roles moving forward yeah. and again you have to remember they were cast in 2016 this was more right. or less daisy ridley's first major piece of casting post the force awakens mm-hmm. and tom han was still quite young at that time right yep. since then cherry devil all the time we, we know and uncharted coming up like we know where tom holland's looking you have to imagine and i looked at daisy's uh work and she's attached to a number of seemingly like period dramas and more artsy like oscar Beatty affair she hasn't been attached to any kind of franchise stuff but you can tell they're definitely both like not interested in this part of their careers anymore which was also why i laughed so much when i saw daisy and tom actually doing press to promote this film even though it was guaranteed the flop like i thought like god like just leave daisy really alone why are you asking her questions about this shitty movie she made so long ago <laughs> yeah Ugh. it's it it's tough too because it's not like it's not like it's just them and nobody else in this cast you mm-hmm. know you got mads mickelson you got cynthia revo you got the director that did edge of tomorrow maybe one of the best yeah. sci-fi action films of the last decade Ed lyman's not a scrub at all he's no. a very accomplished man so what what went wrong with this movie like what made it so bad in your opinion right so i i haven't read the knife of never letting go the first chaos walking book but i do like aspects of it like yes this is a young adult movie and we know the young adult genre is completely dead and buried at this point but just like as like a sci-fi fantasy thing 
I do think there's actually some potential with some of the ideas in this world, namely that you can hear and sometimes see people's thoughts. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times people cannot prevent you from seeing or hearing those thoughts. And it's like, huh, that's very interesting. Later on in the movie, we find out that the town Tom Holland's from, actually, they all, the men all, they killed all the women. Because the like, women's huh. thoughts aren't able to be seen, but men's are. Right. And it's like, huh, that's interesting. Not that I'm advocating that, obviously, but like that idea that like man, man can't help but feel threatened by women and 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 are afraid of them hearing their thoughts. I'm like, huh, there, there's at least something there. Yes, a societal thing. But the movie had no interest in going there, of course. And like when Daisy really comes comes uh, to the to the story, you know, she crashes down. It's like it's like, huh, there's a lot of potential here, but it just ultimately comes really like boilerplate young adult adventure stuff and kind of at every turn doug lyman and 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 the script writers and there was many script writers uh every time there's a chance to take it in more interesting direction they just steer the film back towards the center so it's like at the end of the day nothing is that interesting this movie cost over 100 million dollars you know reshoots included but it doesn't even look that cool. Like I was surprised how bland and and, and dull the whole yeah. set design was. So I was wondering where that money went. Maybe was it just effects to, to visualize all the thoughts and stuff? Maybe if there was a better way to express hearing and seeing people's thoughts, it would have been cool. Because at the end of the day, I think Daisy kind of runs laps around Tom because tom barely speaks because a lot of right. times it's voice over work it's not actually tom performing his lines because they're in his head and she's hearing them that way it's like you know it just there's just a lot of tough decisions and i don't know maybe that stuff you need to figure out before you take a movie like this into production like how yeah. do we actually visualize the most important aspect of the storytelling you know yeah you know i and i just didn't really find a lot of it to like be super interesting like you said there are some aspects of it that i think were really interesting things to explore um i feel like pretty quickly like it all just kind of becomes like the you know on the run story which is okay but like i feel like nothing ever really gets delved into i think the most affecting moments for me are probably near the end of the movie when uh when manchi dies and also when he uh, has Daisy read the uh, his mom's journal to him. I think yeah. those are probably the mm-hmm. two moments where I'm like, okay, this is some like serious acting going on here. Yeah. Definitely affecting. I mean, the, the, the dog getting drowned by David uh, Ayello. Ayello? Yeah. Uh, I can't say oh, his last name. Thank you. Um, that was just tough. Like, I was like, come on, man. <laughs> like, this, this movie already is not fun to watch. Now you, I got actually drowning a dog. Tough. Yeah. Well, and I thought David Owello is probably one of the best parts of the movie because he's just playing this unhinged preacher character. And as a result, the way his thoughts and, and ideas are being manifested is actually really interesting. I was like, yeah. huh. Again, a lot of more meat on that bone that they barely delved in at all. Exactly. And it's like Mads Mikkelsen has a nice presence because it's Mads Mikkelsen, but at the end of the day, he's playing a very stereotypical not interesting bad guy like i i the way they set it up i'm like huh is there more under the hood because just the way mads can like look off in the distance you always think there's so much <laughs> going on and at the end of the day not not this mayor character is not the case yep um so it, it's, it's just like every moment like that it's like you just see like a way something could be more interesting and it's funny the, the original version of the script was written by charlie kaufman can you imagine how like weird and cringy some of these ideas of hearing people's thoughts could have been under in charlie kaufman's brain i i I can't imagine honestly you know but clearly this Lionsgate and uh you know the executives there they just did not like where it went and they extensively took it from there and of course then they reshot it because i believe the quote from the insider was the movie was a a unreasonable an unreleasable the original state so i can't even imagine what it used to look like yeah i mean I'm also like very interested in the whole other like settlement, you know, you get Cynthia Revo as this like badass mayor who's just like running shit. And that's not really explored that much. Um, Nick Jonas, big nothing. I mean, <laughs> what the fuck is going on? He's with just him playing right like a Fredo. 
yeah it's so weird uh, i don't know there's really nothing right. to this movie i found very interesting yeah i mean just booking on the themes i had a lot of like uh there was minority report potential here i hear what mm-hmm. someone thinks even if they haven't done anything you know yep. tons of me in the boat they didn't do it didn't go there also uh there's that scene towards the end where uh ray uh, ray <laughs> <laughs> where Daisy is is going through the ship, and the way they shoot it reminded me of Ray going through the Crash Star Destroyer mm-hmm. on Jakku in Force Awakens. And I was like, "Huh, cool. I saw what you did there. Nice." Yeah, but uh, right. yeah, it's uh, this was a tough one, no question, and uh, no sequels. So we know that much. And honestly, Doug, Doug Lyman, he also released Lockdown earlier this year on HBO Max. That's the Anne Hathaway, uh, Chiwetel Ejiofor movie. That's like a story based around like COVID S things. And it's an okay movie, but I'm more interested in his next project, which will be his third movie with Tom Cruise. That's the movie that Tom Cruise is actually making in space. Yes. And uh, they're both scheduled Lyman and, and crew and Cruise. They're scheduled to go on the SpaceX mission to the international space station in January 22. So I'm sure there's more news to be had on how the fuck they're making that movie. And even what they're making, it's pretty secretive apparently, but um. Yeah, that's cool. And yeah, yeah Doug Lyman, I, I, I don't blame him too much for this because it just seemed like it was a, you know, it, it was a tough one. It just seems like the sort of thing where nothing came together the way they wanted it to. Yeah. Sometimes the sets are cursed like that, unfortunately. So uh, don't, I mean, don't don't waste the 20 bucks. Wait till it comes on streaming and check it out, I'd say. 